Well, uh, we have some updates on the sexual assault allegations against Joe Biden. In fact, BuzzFeed News got a hold of the talking points that Joe Biden's campaign has given to surrogates and supporters who are asked to comment on Tara Reid's sexual assault allegations against Biden. Those talking points include um, the following. Biden believes that all women have the right to be heard and to have their claims thoroughly reviewed, the talking points read, according to the copy sent by two Democratic operatives to BuzzFeed News. In this case, a thorough review by the New York Times has led to the truth. This incident did not happen. Now, if you can recall, when we covered Stacey Abrams' defense of Joe Biden, uh, she used this exact talking point. But she's not the only one. So did Nancy Pelosi. So did Kirsten Gillibrand. So did Kamala Harris. Uh, all these uh, Democratic establishment women who have come out of the woodwork to basically defend Joe Biden, again, they're using these talking points. But there was a video uh, that really caught my attention today, and it featured a reporter asking Nancy Pelosi about her double standard when it comes to Kavanaugh versus Joe Biden and get a load of how she answered that question. By Biden, but they're using a comparatively different standard with, uh, with the Kavanaugh when, when you demanded a, uh, a investigation on Justice Kavanaugh when a very similar uh, allegation came out on him. Uh, why well, let, let me just say, uh, I, I respect your question, and I don't need a, a, a lecture or a speech. Here's the thing. I have a complete respect for the whole Me Too movement. I have four daughters and one son, and uh, there's a lot of excitement around the idea that women will be heard and be listened to. There is also due process, and uh, the fact that Joe Biden is Joe Biden uh, we, there's been s statements from his campaign, or not his campaign, but his former employees who ran his offices and the rest, that there was never any record of this. There was never any record. So I, I do want to clarify one thing. She says that there was never any record of this. Uh, Biden and his Senate records are sealed until two years after he retires. And so now there's a, a growing number of people, including the editorial board over at the Washington Post, urging him to release those records to see if there is any documentation of the complaint, because Tara Reid said that she did, in fact, uh, complain to the higher ups and there should be some record of it. Before we get to the substance of the allegations, and I, I want to comment a couple of things that, on a couple of things that Nancy Pelosi said that gives you a general sense of the environment in D.C. So first of all, she's, I don't need you to lecture me or give a speech. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, when Trump does things like that, um, everybody goes nuts, and I think they should. How dare he attack the press that way? But Pelosi has, hasn't had a hard question in 40 years. So that when she gets a question she doesn't like, she's like, looks at the reporter like, how dare you? Don't you know the unwritten rules? The unwritten rules are you are to never challenge the esteemed Speaker Pelosi. So that's why she's like shocked at having a question that was not pre-approved by Democratic leadership. And so she just dismisses her like, I don't need you to finish your question. I'll tell you what the non-answer is. Okay, I don't see anybody attacking Nancy Pelosi over it. In fact, she partly does that to send a message. Because when Trump yells at you, your ratings go up. But when Democratic leadership yells at you, your editor calls you in and your job is in danger. Let's keep it real. That's what happens in this country. And then she says, Biden is Biden. I don't know what that means, but that doesn't sound like a defense of Biden. That sounds like no. you're saying, oh, how am I gonna do? Biden is Biden. Every once in a while he does this. Well, that's not a great defense because I, I don't know what else Biden is Biden means. Um, and no, then as the story oh, develops, oh, go ahead, Jenk. Sorry, go ahead. So, just, Anna, just to finish the thought there, the only other thing that it could mean is go ask Biden, but Biden's in hiding, uh, and he's having all these female surrogates uh, speak out uh, instead. And I got to tell you, having all of these women who are potentially your running mate audition by defending you against sexual assault allegations on TV, that's pretty gross. 
Yeah, he has not addressed these allegations himself. Uh, instead, women, many of whom are auditioning to uh, be his VP pick, have gone out there and have defended him. But we're not quite done with Pelosi yet because uh, the first time she publicly defended him was on national television. And here's what she had to say. I think that it is time for Vice President Biden to address this head on himself. Well, I, I have great sympathy for any women who bring forth an allegation. I'm a big, strong supporter of the Me Too movement. I, I think it's been a great, made a great contribution uh, to our country. And, a, and, and I do um, uh, support Joe Biden. I'm satisfied uh, with how he has uh, responded. I know him. I was proud to endorse him the other day on Monday. Very proud to endorse him. Uh, and so I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Uh, I mean, he hasn't, to be clear, he hasn't addressed it. His campaign has addressed it, but he has not directly addressed it. Should he directly publicly address it? You know, it's a, a, a matter that he has to deal with. But I am impressed with the people who worked for him at the time saying they ever, absolutely never heard one uh, uh, iota of information about this. Nobody ever brought forth a, a claim or had anybody else tell them about such a claim. Okay, so I, I want to be clear about two important details to this story, because I can easily see uh, the record being wiped, uh, at least in the public's view, uh, of these two facts. Number one, when, you know, the Biden talking points tell surrogates to say that the New York Times investigation has cleared him of wrongdoing, that is absolutely not the case. In fact, the New York Times has released a statement, a strong statement, saying that their reporting has not cleared him or found him guilty. Like, there, it's incl inconclusive, basically. Also, when it comes to what Pelosi is saying here, look, he hasn't addressed it. And there is a double standard. And the way that she's handling this is it just makes it abundantly clear that, like, rape and sexual assault allegations are used as political tools and nothing more. And it's really gross to see this happening right now. Like she's just completely like wiping him of any wrongdoing when there hasn't actually been an investigation. And this has been treated differently from the Kavanaugh case. The Kavanaugh case was taken seriously from the very beginning. Yes, there was a sham investigation. There's been no investigation into these claims against Biden. Yeah, so um, number one, um, Let's note uh, that, you know, I hate to say it, but we were right. Uh, the press, including CNN and including the Washington Post, now calling for Biden to uh, address it directly, are all over the story during the general election, just like we told you. They were completely and utterly absent during the primaries when this story came out, uh, because to them, progressives are invisible. It doesn't matter. If, if you raise an issue, we don't care how serious it is. And we don't care how important it is. We will not cover it because you people are progressives and we hate you and we hate Bernie Sanders. But the minute he's out of the race, we told you they'd cover it. And here they are all over the national news. Now, second point, uh, a little bit unrelated to this, but now watching two clips of Nancy Pelosi together, she can't string together a sentence either. Uh, and, you, you know, here's an amazing fact. Nancy Pelosi... Uh, was born before India was a country. <laughs> okay, also true, of, by the way, of Joe Biden and Donald Trump. All of our leaders, because they are backed by the media and, they're back, and they've been around for a long, long time and have enough name recognition, um, are incredibly old. They've held on to power jealously with great greed and they will not let it go. And they're all falling apart at the seams right in front of our eyes. Anytime we point out something that's true, they go ballistic over it and then later admit that it's true. So Pelosi can't put together a sentence either. And then finally, uh, her defense was curious when she's like, hey, you know, I really believe in the Me Too movement and I got four daughters. You're a woman. You don't have to clarify that you're in favor of the Me Too movement. It makes me think, wait, are you not in favor of the Me Too movement? Like, it's like if I randomly just jumped out and was like, look, man, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm, I don't want uh, discrimination against Turks. I'm, I'm against it. You know, of course, I'm Turkish American. Why the hell would I want discrimination against Turks? Doesn't make any sense. It leads me to think, like the way that she framed it, she's like, 
hey, you know, you got to get along. And so folks in power sometimes do that. But hey, look, I got daughters. I got daughters. So I'm I'm in favor of the Me Too movement. What a weird well, look, way of it's putting a way, it. It's a way of um, having your cake and eating it too, right? Because the Me Too movement has been used as a political tool, I, I believe, by the Democratic Party. It's been used by uh, uh, the Republican Party. It's just, it's turned into, unfortunately, something that's been co-opted for uh, dishonest actors for political gain, right? So for me, this story is not about Bernie Sanders. Like, uh, like I know some of the people watching this right now, they're gonna come at me on Twitter like, oh, you're so bitter about Bernie. No, I'm not bitter about Bernie. Like that's over, okay? Uh, I, I totally understand that the DNC would never in a million years replace Biden with Bernie. I'm not yeah. delusional. But yeah. one thing that I want you guys to understand is now we have Biden, an incredibly flawed candidate, even without the sexual assault allegations, he was already an incredibly flawed candidate, um, you know, for all the different reasons that we've explained on this show over several months. But like, there, like the line of defense, you're right, Jenk, is so incredibly thin, right? Like she wants to be able to say like, I love the Me Too movement because I might want to keep that movement in my back pocket when I want to go snipe a candidate I don't like, usually someone on the left more than anything. but. She lied in that interview too. Biden's staffers, Senate staffers, who Tara Reid went to and complained to, did not say that it did not happen. They said they do not recall it happening, right? And I think that that's an important distinction because that's typically what people say when they don't want to admit guilt, right? But they also don't want to perjure themselves in any way. You know, maybe they're just covering their tracks and saying, I do not recall. One person said, I do not recall, and I would have remembered if this happened, right? But every single person said, I don't remember anything like this happening. We should see his Senate records. I mean, yeah. he's running for president. This isn't a joke. It isn't a joke. And I don't care if he's a Democrat. I don't care what kind of threat Donald Trump is. We need to know the truth about the candidates who are running. And for everyone who wants me to say this, I will say it. I'll say it a million times if you want me to. Donald Trump has more sexual assault allegations against him. But now we're put in a position to do like this weird like weighing contest, like, oh, who's more of a sexual predator? I'm not interested in engaging in that conversation. I would rather have a leader in this country who doesn't have serious and credible sexual assault allegations against them. So uh, for those of you who haven't heard any of this, uh, a very quick recap is that uh, Tara Reid now has four people corroborating her story that she said to them that she was sexually harassed by Joe Biden back in the early 1990s. She said it to them back then. Four different people. That is a lot of folks. By If it was against anyone else, every Democrat in the country would have already believed those uh, uh, corroborating witnesses. And it looks like her mom called in to CNN, to Larry King Live in, back in the early 1990s, and talked about how her daughter uh, you know, or someone she knows was uh, sexually or, or harassed, let's put it that way. It was a little bit vaguer uh, by an important yeah, so senator. Let me clarify that because her mother called in and said that her daughter had a negative experience with a senator and wanted yes. advice on what I, her daughter can do. Mm -hmm. Yes, to be clear, because they say, well, look, her mom calling in at the same exact time as the four other corroborating witnesses has saying negative experience. Maybe she twisted her ankle. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. OK. All right. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> you decide what you want uh, with that negative experience with a senator means. Uh, her mom has since then passed away. And um, and so, look, it's impossible for us to know what happened there. But, but there are things that you can check, uh, as we've done with every other story. And so. Uh, one last thing about that is that even the New York Times corroborated that she used to be in charge of the intern program and was abruptly taken off the intern program. Okay, so again, none of these by themselves are conclusive. And yes, uh, I'm going to vote against Donald Trump. Uh, so you know what uh, you are if you are going to vote against Donald Trump, but you actually talk about a legitimate uh, allegation against his opponent? It's called principled. Um, the rest of the Democratic Party might want to look into it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges.
you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.